Hey everyone, this is going to be a tutorial on how to use the StyleGAN2 app. It's a web app hosted on Glitch, powered by Runway ML, using their GPU instances and the StyleGAN2 generative adversarial node. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to open from our Windows Start menu, Runway. If you haven't downloaded Runway already, I have some instructions on the Glitch README. Um, on where to download and how to download it. They do have a web version available, but for now, I think I would prefer to just have everyone download individual ones to their local machines and post to the web app. So once you sign in on the login page, you'll be taken to this homepage. It has a few different functions that you can see here. You have create your own models, which allows you to custom train data sets. And then on the right is browse models. If you click on that, you can navigate through existing models. So if we scroll through here, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be using my own William Morris wallpaper style GAN2 model, but there are also public models like the building generator style GAN model right here. So once you find one that you'd like to work with, you just click on add to workspace. Define the new workspace and then it will automatically take you to the workspace. Once there, you'll see these two windows with some information on the right. So the main thing is that it's displaying choose an input source and it's saying vector. So that will be the vector input that we will give to the generative adversarial network so that it can output based on that vector information. The bottom is the export window where we can save the image generated by that vector information. You can see that there are two options, inference and network. Inference will run this model within the runway space. Network allows you to post to uh, different web apps, which is what we'll be using later in this tutorial. On the bottom right, you can see the run remotely options. This will allow you to use Runway's GPU instances to run previously trained models, whether they were trained by you with custom data sets or just a model that you found on the browse models section. Once you run it and it finishes loading, you'll see it says stop. So that's how you know that it is running and you'll want to be careful not to let it just run on forever because you do need credits to run these. I think it costs about five cents per minute and not realize that you have it running all day. So Runway has done a pretty brilliant thing in compressing the 512 dimensional latent space of generative adversarial networks into a 2D representation of the neighborhoods. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. So you can see these image outputs uh, from the latent space vectors and they're displayed with similar images being closest to them. So what we wanna do first is once we have an image selected that we like, we can save the image. So I have a JSON folder in my downloads folder that I'm gonna save first the image to and then I'll save the JSON vector information. So then I'm gonna to navigate to that. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm adjusting the names for uh, my own naming convention that I like to follow. I suggest just using the default names uh, that Runway has when saving. Uh, I have had files corrupt when uh, changing the name uh, during saving. So I just save it as the default and then uh, rename it once it's in the folder. We can now go back and find another uh, image that we like from this latent space representation. So we now find another vector. We can again save that image, save the vector, and then rename those as well. We'll do this a few more times, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to keep a relatively low number of uh, JSONs in my folder. However, you can store as many as you would like. Now, if you navigate to glitch.com in your browser and go to the search bar, 
type in stylegan 2 latent space. The project page for this web app should come up. You can navigate down to remix this. This will duplicate the project for your own glitch account. By remixing the project, it allows you access to the assets folder, which is the primary focus of this part of the tutorial. If you open up the left sidebar for the glitch project, you'll see an assets section. If you click on the assets file, you'll get this message, no assets yet, drag files here to use them in your project. Then navigate to your local JSON folder where you're housing your JSON files and select them and drag them into the assets folder. This will populate your glitch project with each of the JSON files that you'd like to use within the project. This is important as this is the connection between your local drives and the web interface. You can see that the JSON files open up this string of floats. These are 512 floats representing the vectors within the latent space of the generative adversarial network. If you go to the top bar on your glitch project page and click on show, and then in a new window, it will open up the app in a separate window with the newly added JSON files integrated into it. You'll then be able to use all of the built-in functions within the web app with the files that are saved from your local drives. For this project, you'll first see a dropdown with three options, interpolate image, generate neighborhood, and vector map. So the first one we're gonna look at is interpolate image, which requires uh, two inputs, an A and a B input, and you will give it a slider value, which is the weight to interpolate between those two images. The second one is the generate neighborhood function, which requires one input, and will generate random neighbors uh, based on the standard deviation value set by the slider. The third function is the vector math, which takes three input JSON files and displays the three images and allows you to fine tune manipulations of features between them with addition, subtraction, and variable weighting of each image. You'll see that in the interface, there is a set, reset, and then interpolate button, as well as the slider. And then on the bottom left-hand corner, there is a save image button. The reset button allows you to reset the web app in order to change which function you would like to use at the moment. The set button prompts another button to appear to choose the file. Then you can select the JSON file in your local folder. Once the images are set, you can click on interpolate for the interpolation function. And for the generate neighborhood function, you'll load your one image and then adjust the slider as needed. And you can click generate. And each time you click generate, it will generate a new resultant image based on the random Gaussian output correlating with the standard deviation set by the slider. At any moment, you can navigate to the save image at the bottom left hand corner, click on it, and it will save the output image to your downloads folder. After saving the image, you'll need to refresh the page to go back to the start and then reselect the function that you'd like to continue working with. Thank you all for watching and please reach out to me if you have any questions or go to my channel for more helpful links. I'll leave a few links in the description for extra content. Thanks for watching.